welcome to signal and system lecture series here in this session i'll be explaining z transform of some standard basic signals so here we have a question that is find z transform of sequence x of n equals to minus a to the power n u of minus n minus 1 so we are little bit to calculate what is the z transform of this sequence so z transform that is x of z that is what z transform of x of n and the basic formula of z transform is summation n varies from minus infinite to infinite x of n into z to the power minus n now we can place this x of n over here in this equation so if we place this minus a to the power n u of minus n minus 1 now see if you observe this equation then in this equation you find it like u of minus n minus 1 is there so this u of minus n minus 1 that may change this summation limits so how it will be affecting so for that we need to see what is the signal u of minus n minus 1 so basically we know u of n if you plot that u of n then you'll be finding u of n that is happening like this which is having magnitude 1 starts from 0 and it goes up to positive infinity now from this we can have u of minus n and that is what folded version of this so if you fold this signal you will be getting u of minus n so if you plot this u of minus n then it is what folded version of this so you will be finding folding of this means you will have to fold it with respect to 0th sample so it will happen in this direction with magnitude 1 so you will be finding at 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 see this is how u of minus 1 will be there now if you calculate based on this if you calculate u of minus n minus 1 then as if you provide minus 1 shifting with u of minus n then signal will get shifted by one position in this direction so now this impulse train that will start from minus infinity and by one sample this signal will shifted over here so we'll be finding one impulse will happen over here so 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 that is how this impulse train will be there so with one magnitude its limit will be from minus infinite to 1 so we can place this limit minus infinite to 1 in this z transform so that we can nullify this u of minus n minus 1 so if we apply this then now our basic formula of x of z now that will change to now summation will start from n is equals to minus infinity to 1 minus a to the power n z to the power minus n so this is how limit will change now basically when you want to calculate this type of term we need to focus one term in our mind and that is we have basic idea about if you have summation n varies from 0 to infinite a to the power n then that is 1 by 1 minus a so if you keep this in your mind then you should have limit starting from 0 to infinite so here first thing is we need to have swapping of this limit so that we can have limit from 0 to infinite so first i will be rearranging this so minus that sign that i am taking outside summation n varies from minus infinite to 1 now see if i say a z inverse to the power n then this is how this term is there now if you want to swap the limits so what i'll be doing is i'm swapping limit from 1 to infinite see if i swap the limit 
it is right now from minus infinite to 1. So if I make it to 1 to infinite, then I need to place n is equals to minus n inside. So to swap limits, to swap limits, place n is equals to minus n over here. So you'll be getting now swapped version of limit that will be minus of n varies from 1 to infinite and instead of n now I need to place minus n. So if I place minus n over here then you'll be getting now this term that will changes to z a inverse to the power n. Why the reason is if you say minus means this is what 1 by a z inverse. So 1 by a z inverse is what? z a inverse. So that is how this power will change this over here and now we can compare that with this equation. So this is what basic equation where limit is from 0 to infinite. So till we don't have limit from 0 to infinite. So we need to write this term in such a way so that we can have limit from 0 to infinite. Now see to have it all I can do is see if I write limit varies from 0 to infinite then I am adding one additional term that is n is equals to 0 inside. So that additional term that I need to subtract. Now at n is equals to 0 if you place n is equals to 0 something to the zero, something raised to 0 is 1 so I am subtracting it over here so that I can make limit n is equals to 0 to infinite. Previously it was from 1 to infinite but to make it from 0 to infinite I am adding one term and subtracting it. Adding means what? The term z a inverse raised to 0 so that is 1 so I am subtracting 1 so that we can have limit from 0 to infinite. Now we can apply this over here in this formula. So if we apply this in this formula will be getting minus now see here a is equals to z a inverse so 1 divided by 1 minus z a inverse minus 1 so what is z a inverse let us simplify this so z a inverse so that is z by a so if i take lcm in this then it will be a divided by a minus z minus 1. Now again if I simplify this minus into a minus a plus minus minus plus z divided by a minus z. So this a will get cancelled. So minus sign if I take it in denominator then that will be z minus a. So we can say this is what z divided by z minus a. So z transform z transform of x of n is equals to minus a to the power n u of minus n minus 1 that is z divided by z minus a. So this is what the basic z transform. Now see I will give you quick summary of what we have done for standard basic signal z transform. So we have already calculated a to the power n u of n z transform and that z transform that is z divided by z minus a. Now see if you have signal minus a to the power n u of minus n minus 1 then z transform of that even you can see z divided by z minus a. Now see some other signals even that I have derived in previous session one was a to the power minus n u of n so that z transform that is a z divided by a z minus 1 and one more derivation that we have done minus a to the power minus n u of minus n minus 1 that z transform that is even a z divided by a z minus 1. So these are the formulas of standard basic signals that transform. 
so this is so essential in gate like examination where you can have a question based on direct question and by having a comparison one can directly give the answer if you don't know the answer then every time you'll have to go with basic procedure as i have explained over here in my sessions but it will take little more time but if you know this formulas then directly one can calculate that with shortcut method but in university examination you'll have to follow this process every time to solve z transform so in university examination when you want to obtain marks at that time you'll have to follow this process but in some competitive examination you can use this formulas for shortcut way of calculation of z transform i hope that you have understood this session thank you so much for watching this video